Yo ho, West Coast. Hey, East Coast. How we doing? Ah, uh, we're doing okay. So uh, a couple weeks ago, you you had proposed a new little segment on our show. What did you call it again? One show, one drink. Kind of a mini version of what we normally do. We will try really hard to keep this brief. Define brief. I'm thinking like uh, 15 minutes, maybe? We get in, we get out. All right. Let me roll the intro real quick, and then we'll get back to the show. Welcome to What We Watch When We Drink, a booze dancing media podcast featuring lively discussions about movies, TV shows, and anything else that we're watching while we drink our favorite boozy libations. If you enjoy this podcast, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always find us on boozedancing.com. If you have any questions, comments, show suggestions, by all means, email us at boozedancing at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. One show, one drink. We're just going to take one show, one episode, uh-huh. one movie with one drink and regurgitate it in a short amount of time. So you, the listeners, sounds- our, our wonderful audience out there, can uh, just have just a little piece of us. Not a whole like long, endless diatribe. This will be just a little tiny bit of us. How's that sound? So it's an amuse-bouche, an amuse-bouche of podcast? Yes, exactly. And our goal is to amuse. We are amusing folks, and we want to amuse our, our wonderful audience. So God, I before we so. go too far, we need to think about what we're drinking. Uh, I got some stuff lined up here. What do you got? But only one. One drink. One drink. So I've got a uh, single malts of Scotland, one of the many, many samples that we received from our good friends at Impex Beverages. It is a 21-year-old Glen Berge. Whiskey with a five, two fives to be exact, two fives and a point two. Boom. It's old enough to drink itself. <laughs> I have a 15-year-old Bladnock, uh, the Adela Ooh. Limited Edition. It's a Lowland, and I was given it to, my, given it to me by my friend Michael Reese from the Southern California Whiskey Club, and uh, it looks beautiful on, in a glass. Are we ready for a little clinky clink? Sir, cheers. Boom, cheers. Oh, very nice. Oh, it smells lovely. Very nice. It smells lovely. All right. This is this is light, fruity, uh-huh. and uh, it packs a punch. Oh, scotchy scotch, scotch, scotch. I love scotch. All right, so we got our one drink. What All right, so let's show? get into it. We are talking about the very first episode, the pilot episode of Seinfeld, starring Ooh. Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld and Jason Alexander and Michael Richards. And that's right. it. That's it. So the fourth player is not there yet. The fourth player is not there yet. So this is nineteen ninety eight, I believe. Is that what when it came out? No, no, I think eighty nine. Uh, I'm sorry, eighty nine. I have to admit, when I rewatched it, because I'm assuming I watched it, you know, twenty thirty years ago, I didn't recall any of it. So it was a little bit surprising to me, all the very, the many facets of the show on its first day. Did you have any recollection of it? Uh, A little bit, but only because I, you know, it's always in reruns. So it was always on like TBS or, you you know, the the local affiliate. The pilot episode shows up on reruns? Probably not, because I don't think it was that popular of a show in the beginning. No. And it wasn't really the Seinfeld that we all know and love. It was, it was there, like the seeds were there, but it didn't really take root yet. Correct. So what I found interesting about it really was that it felt almost more like the show part of it. The sitcom-y part of it was almost like half the show, whereas the sit the stand-up part of it, where Jerry's doing his his uh, nightclub act, was it felt uh-huh. like it's just as long. There was some there was some fairly long stand-up portions. What was really funny too is like the contrast between his persona on stage as a comedian versus him as an actor. You could tell he's so much more relaxed, just doing his thing and being as a stand-up. It was really really. St- like a really stark contrast. Do we know if Jerry did much acting before the show? I don't think he did. He he's pretty good at it on that first episode, but you can you're right. He seems way more comfortable doing his stand up. Right. Well, when he's on stage, he's just being himself. Of course. Because that's what he's been doing for. He was doing for probably he was probably doing that for 15 to 18 years prior to getting the pilot. Because he's what about 65 right now? How old is Jerry? Probably uh, mid 60s. Yeah, he's probably mid 60s. Sure. 
Yeah, so he's about mid-60s. So that was, he was like 30 then. He was probably doing stand-up for at least 10 to 12 years before he got the pilot. So, I mean, because he goes back to Carson days, wasn't he? Carson and Letterman, he he was on all those shows. Definitely. Well, definitely on Carson. It's interesting how the show looks also. When I think of Seinfeld, of course, I think of the other, the, the... the last seven eight years of the show not the very first right. season right. and it has a it has a slightly different look the the um the diner is not the same mm-hmm. diner his apartment is similar there's little there's little nuances to it that are different um as you said there's no uh elaine in the episode there's only kramer who's not exactly the kramer i think that no he's a of. little he's a little different he's you know what he's more like We've talked about it before. Remember Fridays when he was mm-hmm. on Fridays yep. Yep. with Larry David back on in the day. Yep. He was like that, where he was like just a weird kind of guy. Correct. You know, he, not that he wasn't weird later. It feels like a pilot, and it feels yeah, like it's not fully formed in someone's head of how this is mm-hmm. going to be and what this is going to be. Uh, the, of course, the old line about them is it's a show about nothing. I'm not even right. sure if it knows that it wants to be a show, wants to be a show about nothing yet. It it doesn't even have that even kind of. It feels like it's not sketched out. Maybe it is. George feels like almost as important as Jerry in that first. Oh, absolutely. It could it could be yeah, feel yeah. it could be the Costanza show. It's like George is like his consigliere. It's like you know his right hand man, and Jerry's always kind of running things by him, and and he doesn't seem the 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 oafish character he is in later years he's yeah not quite kind of thought out kind of kind of smart you wouldn't think that this is going to be this goofy guy and some mm-hmm. late, somewhere down the down the road so did you did you laugh when you re-watched it i i did there were some funny there were some very very funny moments actually you know what i found funny just the little side things like the waitress you know and how she was with the whole thing with the coffee yes. Yep. And the decaf versus the regular and George just being all paranoid about that. She was great. She was. I thought she was really funny. It's a shame she wasn't on there later because that would have been kind of a nice character. You know, like like the bartender. Instead, it's the waitress. Of you course. Know? Yeah. It's their hangout. They're there all the time. I laughed more, I think, at the stand-up. But I actually remember a lot of the the bits. You know, the sock joke and the laundry stuff. And I mean, those yep. are classic Seinfeld. The sitcom part, the acting part... <laughs> didn't bowl me over but i was totally intrigued no it was yeah it was it was still like you know they're still finding their way especially Mm -hmm. jerry because he's not really the actor in the butt i mean even michael richards at least did sketch comedy jason alexander had i think some broadway background before oh yeah i'm sure and so it's interesting that if you took out the woman that's the main part of the the storyline and the woman that's uh, the the waitress there's no women in this, this episode, right? No, that's it. Not at all. And were they thinking at the time this can be about this guy and his two friends who are all guys, or were they, or was that was there some thought that we're going to need to kind of bring some balance here and bring a, a, a woman into the into the storyline permanently? I don't know. I don't know what the uh, history was. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these shows, I mean, if you go back to, not to not to go off, off topic, but when you listen to a lot of people talk about the show, especially the first season, there's a lot of characters that are supposed to be killed off in a lot of shows. Sure. Like Jesse on Breaking Bad, or uh, I think Logan in Succession was supposed to die at the end of the first season. So, you know, maybe it's that kind of thing where they have to kind of feel their way around it. And plus, you don't know until you get renewed how the story is going to go. So maybe when they bring Elaine on, you know, it tested better with her in it. And I said, all right, well, we'll add her as a regular. I mean, you don't, I don't know the whole backstory. So that could always be a play, I guess. Interestingly, I looked to see this first aired July 5th, 1989. Right. Wow. That first Middle season, of summer. So it was a summer replacement show. Uh, so you know, wait, wait, wait. Go back. Days? The date was, you said July 5th. How many, how much TV watching is there really going on the day after 4th of July? The summertime was not a TV time. Life's different now with streaming sources, but historically, TV had a, had the same calendar as just school year school gets out nobody's watching tv you put on summer reruns you put on variety shows uh and maybe a, a sitcom here and there to fill the space during the during the summer and then boom it all starts over in the fall when the kids go back to school people are in front of tv again and 
this is one of those shows. There were only five episodes that ran from July of 89 through June of 90. That's it. Mm-hmm. And it took a year right. to show five episodes. Season two, there's only 12 episodes. It's not even a fully right. run show in, in season two. It hasn't been been fully picked up. Um, not till year three do we get, uh, you know, okay, it's on the schedule. It's a, it's going to be all time. What's the old run? Like 26 weeks? That's what they used to do? Yeah, it looks like they were like 23 to 24 shows every year, looks like, through, the, through their history. Um, right. that for, They were not even ranked in the Nielsen's in the first two seasons. <laughs> um, and I can see that. I mean, I... It was very much an under-the-radar show for a while, until it finally took off. It's in the summertime. It's about a stand with comedian. You're not really sure what it's about. It's buried in some night, you know, in the, right after July 4th that first episode and I can see people going, huh? What is this? Right now? I re- I do recall, uh, because I was a huge stand up comedian fan of the time. I loved watching all those guys that we would see on TV on Letterman and Carson. I wanted to see all their TV shows and I'm, I, I don't recall this up this episode, but I do recall watching Seinfeld in the very early days because I was mm-hmm. a Jerry fan. And I think that's who probably got hooked on to those kinds of shows first. But that doesn't mean that the shows were very good. And I think mm-hmm. this one, I don't know if I, how I would give it a grade, this, this uh, pilot. It's like the first episode of our podcast. It needs to find its way. Sure. Yeah. I think it's hard to look at it without looking, knowing what we know now. It feels like the beginning of something. And yep. you can see where... Larry David and, and Jerry kind of got together and they had to put this thing together. And of course, it got all the pressures, like you said, of network TV people, right? It's not just like, oh, we're going to make this, this amazing evolutionary, revolutionary TV show. That's not how it works. Is anyone watching? Can you get someone into the network kind of back in you? They're number three in season five. They're number one in season six. And then two, then two, then number one. The first year they're rated... They're 41st. They're like, right. you know, that's not great. But after no. two, you know, middling seasons, they probably were bouncing around on the schedule. It's tough. It's definitely tough back then. Oh, I'm sure. And that's really, it was the only game in town at the time. You're right. But Jerry's funny. That's the essence of it all. I mean, if that show continued with Jerry being, let's say a third of the show is sit stand up and two thirds of it is, is, uh, the show, right? I would have hung with it. That was oh, yeah. that was great. I would have loved it. Now, in the end, it was probably what two minutes of Jerry doing any. Maybe I don't even that. think they did any of that because they kind of dropped. They probably that did delete before, it, didn't they? Because they used to open up with the with the yeah, you know, stage. with the stand up all the time for at least the first season or two. Yeah, and then it just kind of stopped. It just kind of went to the show. But then you know the show found itself and what yeah. it wanted to do and what it wanted to be. And I guess it didn't. What does the show want to be? Why does yeah. the show even exist? Who are these people? Who are these people having podcasts? Why do we need a podcast? It, it, Can we do the, the, we do this the Kramer, <laughs> the, the Kramer character was, was so bizarre in the first first couple episodes. He was just so. I mean, he was bizarre the whole run, but he was particularly bizarre because he just was like, you know, I think they said at one point, "You haven't left your apartment in ten years." I'm yeah, like, that was weird hearing that line. Right? It was a little. Odd, I, it was I wonder if it's referenced again later. I don't know. Like I'm not that. sure. And now I'm kind of curious and he has a to dog. go back and rewatch. <laughs> oh, is that his dog? I don't know if it's his dog, but he comes in with a dog. I know, was there was weird. a dog that comes in. I was like, where the hell did the dog come from? Where yeah. did the dog come from? Yes. Where some... did that dog come from? Where, who, is what is he drinking very... out of? Lots of shows have that, that you know, that mindless character who's kind of wacky, out on, yep. out on the uh, fringe of the whole show from the rest of the cast, especially back then. You could see that was he was the guy. There was no oh, doubt. Yeah. But you could argue later on that uh, George is just as wacky as... as uh, Oh, they're way. all wacky. They're all, they're well, all wacky. So I mean, Jerry. the straight man is Jerry. Jerry's the straight man, he's right? Told, he's just wait. He's setting up this whole little universe for all the wackiness yeah. that goes on around and, him, right? And, and again, not to go too deep into the show, and, and not to go deep into it at all, but there was the, the... Remember there was the whole episode where George was... I think, wait, George was behind, Elaine was ahead, and Jerry was break-even. He was <laughs> even right. Steven. Yes. You know? So that, he was just... 
right down the middle, just even keel, just going with it. It was different compared to, you know, what it was later down the road. Very different. Not not a fully formed show at all. Uh, definitely something that had potential and had a great stand-up comedian name and face. And so, I, I like I said, I knew I was going to hang with it um, mm-hmm. and did. So, uh, way to go, Jerry. Thanks for hanging with yeah. us. Actually, you know what was a fun bit, though? The fun, the laundromat was kind of fun. Just watching the women behind them, listening to the whole conversation. We, the uh, innocent bystander <laughs> in the background. Oh, that was great, all, though. They were always, you know, you, they're just staring at them. Is this mm. acting? What is that? Did someone tell them to do that? What? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's but what was great funny. about it, though, is that they actually wound up getting them in the middle of the scene, sort of. You know, just kind uh-huh. of like calling them into yeah. it. You know, because we've all done it, right? You're sitting yes. somewhere and you've got these people having this conversation and you're eavesdropping. You can't help it. And then once it starts getting really ridiculous, they're like, did he really say that? What is going on? Looking at these things now and in the lens that we are today, would that show get made today? Uh, probably not. Probably not. But then again, you never know. No. Well, you know what, though? You know what, though? you got to figure, though. A lot of these stand-up comics now have shows, right? True. But it would so be, why wouldn't they do it? Would it be that show or would it be some No, show? it would be a different show, I think. It would probably be a little bit more, a little more personal show. You yeah, know, it like, wouldn't be uh, what was it, Rami? Offbeat. Rami, yeah, it's much more deep about the, the person and what his life experience right. is. You know, Jerry's is about his life experience as well. I mean, that's where his stand-up comes from. But right. it's you don't get the sense that this is actually his life. This is the life he led as living in an apartment in New York City. I, 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 I never felt that. He's, he's playing a character. Yeah, but it was good. It was fun. I yeah, thought it was, it was fun. It actually, again, it made me curious to go back and just start watching them again. And now we should we should add that just it, it just recently be I think you said this it, it's on Netflix the whole series is on Netflix so you yep. can go stream the entire series which we I'd recommend um, it was a great great show and that first episode was the beginnings of it all right yep yep good fun good good fun one show one drink we have done it we have nailed down the very first episode of seinfeld on what we watch when we drink and stay tuned we'll have another little mini episode yes so shall i tell us people where they can find us oh please do so you could find us on apple podcasts google stitcher spotify audible uh trying to think where else wherever else you can get your podcasts and again you could always find us on boozedancing.com and Again, email us at boozedancing at gmail.com with any suggestions, comments, and all that good stuff. So we hope to hear from you. Sir? Cheers. Oh, sorry. Cheers, sir. Cheers, Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Oh, yeah, that might be the next show. All right, man. I'll talk to you. Cheers. Cheers.